So this is our one year review of what it's really like to start boat life. The pros and cons of learning to live on a boat, the ups and downs of teaching ourselves to sail with no previous experience and everything in between. Wow. That was so intense right. and crazy. Whew. So before we get into all the pros and cons on living on this beautiful boat, I thought it would make sense to just go through the last year in a quick two minute timeline because it has been quite the whirlwind experience. But there is so much that happened that I'm actually going to use my captain's log to navigate me through. So let's head back to November 2019 when the boat dream really started coming to a reality. Live Creatively, our ebook, which we wrote while we were living in a van, traveling around in Europe, launches. And luckily for us, you guys really showed up for us. And so the over by the end of November, the ebook had sold $35,000, which is literally insane. And then we also sold our van back in October of 2019 and got seven grand for that. So basically we were working with about $42,000 to buy the boat. So that brings us to December, 2019. We've got the cash, now it's time to find our dream boat. So my brother who was working with us at the time took lead on finding the boat. And so he ended up organizing us to see every single Hallberg Rossi Rasmus 35 on the Eastern seaboard. So that was about 5,000 miles of driving. And we went and we looked at every single one. We looked at other kinds of boats too, not just the Hallbergs, but by the end of it, we realized that this one that we are currently sitting in, the most expensive one, was the perfect boat for us. You can tell when something's been loved and this boat really was. So in February, it finally happened. Our dream came true and we actually bought a sailboat. It was truly like the most surreal feeling to have all this cash in your bank account and then transfer it away and then come to a boatyard and be like, that huge thing standing in front of me is actually ours. Like. Welcome to our boat tour. Um, this is pretty crazy. We just got this boat. We climbed aboard looking around and it's just like, it's hard honestly to put into words when you've thought about something for so long. I think Lou and I have been talking, truly like talking about doing boat life for five years at this point. And so then to have it just be like actually around us and the boat was so beautiful and just so much potential in a space that we didn't even know at the time, honestly. like. I think we had tried to imagine what boat life could be, but we didn't know how to sail. <laughs> We'd barely been on boats. And then to be on our own, we didn't even know like how special and spectacular it would be to like fall asleep looking at the stars or waking up and hearing birds or the smell of the ocean and all of these magical things that, you know, you envision, but then when it's your reality, it's just, yeah truly like a life-changing year and so in February when that happened and Penelope became ours it's just something that I'll always cherish for sure. The coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. Here's what we know. Breaking news tonight the coronavirus outbreak declared a global pandemic. Uh, but uh, we have it so well under control it's going to disappear one day it's like a miracle it will disappear. So March 2020 something I'm sure all of us remember that is when COVID hit and so at this point, Lou and I had been living at my parents' house um, since November of 2019. And it felt like the right choice for us not to be living there anymore. Cause we were like, you know, trying to quarantine, but also trying to go to the boat. So we ended up with my brother renting a place near the boat and moving up to be close to Penelope so that we could work on her. And yeah, we got our masks, we got quarantined. And luckily for us, the boat yards near us were actually kept open along with the hardware stores because they're all considered essential. So basically in complete isolation, the three of us just got started working on the boat. And that was our whole life, you know, work on the boat, go home and sleep, work on the boat, go home and sleep. And that's kind of how we kicked off March and it kept going April, then May, June, all of it was total madness getting this boat ready to put her in the water. We had a lot of construction projects going on. Some you may remember like tearing out our nav station, which made a lot of people really unhappy, but honestly has worked out incredibly for us. It's kind of like a content station and has made editing for Lou way more manageable. We got our electrical system running, which was Lou 
honestly, praise to Lou who figured out how to get our electrical system running. Our engine wires melted. That was another month delay. So March, April, May, even part of June, we were just working on the boat full time, getting to know her, trying to figure out the space, how to make it the best for us, um, while also trying to manage like the craziness that was happening in the world at that time. So it was definitely a tricky time, but obviously much more difficult for so many other people. We're really grateful that we were able to stay safe, or keep working, um, and have our boat. Hold it. Yeah, don't hold up. So then it was June, and we finally got to see Penelope in the water because we didn't do a sea trial when her, with her when we bought her. We kind of just like went for it, trusted our gut, trusted the previous owner. And luckily for us, when we got her in the water, everything was perfect. There was like no leaks, the engine worked great. Our friends gave us like new friends, basically nice guys at the boatyard who have like turned into great friends of ours. They let us have one of their moorings to use and it just ended up being much more smooth than we thought. The launch day was gorgeous. It was like blue skies and it really felt like a day. You know those days when like everything aligns and you feel like it's kind of like where you were meant to be? That's kind of when I look back at our launch day, it was like that. Like Penelope looked so good in the water, the sun was shining and just after so many delays and so much hard work to get her ready, it really felt like a momentous like moment for the whole team. Our first night on the boat. Are we having fancy dinner? It's a fancy dinner. You guys cooked up a storm. I'm gonna go put on a fancy shirt. So by July of 2020, we had the stern arch installed on the back, which was a crazy project. And then we got into the rest of the install. So we put the solar panels up on the stern arch and that ended up giving us enough power for all of the filming and editing needs of the entire summer, which was so cool. July was a crazy month. We said goodbye to my little brother, David. We are so grateful for his help. He was with us for, I think, six months helping us work here, learning to edit and all that stuff. And it was an incredible experience that I will forever cherish. So thank you, David, if you're watching for all of your time. And then basically the rest of July and August were just dedicated to learning how to sail. August really was our month. I feel like it was like when things started really coming together, we started getting more confident on the boat. We were trying to sail her as much as we could while we still balanced doing all the other projects on the boat. So during August, if I remember correctly, we plumbed salt water through the kitchen so that we could do dishes there instead of in a bucket outside, which was a huge improvement on my life. Um, we also tried to install Wi-Fi, but that was a bit of a fail. But it was mainly about just getting confident with Penelope at her home. We got, we were able to get on and off the mooring easy we learned to dock we tried to learn how to balance the boat and get comfortable with the sails and trimming the jib and you know all of this lingo that we didn't know at all I feel like August was when we started to dive into the books and then try to put it out into practice so September Lou's birthday he turned 30 it was amazing we did our longest voyage yet we installed our hydro vane and what else did we do oh we learned how to anchor so that was huge then October, I turned 30. It felt really special to have my 30th birthday on Penelope because I feel like, yeah, after dreaming about this for so long and having all of these delays, Lou and I kept looking at each other during different points of the year and they're like, at least if we turn 30 on the boat, we all like have started to feel like we are accomplishing what we want to accomplish. And so for both of us to have our birthdays on the boat doing really special like adventure days, it was a real cherry on top of a quite an insane year. So yeah, also in October, the weather started getting very hit or miss. So we had a few big storms that were coming through. There were days that were absolutely gorgeous. And then there would be 40 knots of wind, tons of like chop coming through into the harbor, Penelope going all over the place, having it hard to sleep. And so I feel like October started getting us ready that, okay, I think we did make the right decision taking her out of the water in November, which is then what happens in November was probably the right call because getting to the Caribbean at that point for us just seemed like we had so many projects that we wanted to do and not enough time to make them happen. And the weather was starting to get gross and just seemed like better for us to not rush things so much and actually enjoy the preparation of getting her ready to sail around the world so that when we do launch this big expedition, 
we will have a boat that we feel totally safe in and also totally comfortable in because yes we want to get new rigging and things like that which will just make our voyage safer but we also have a lot of projects that we want to do that will just make our life way nicer like getting a refrigerator so that wraps up the major highlights from my captain's log from our first season of boat life and i feel like now that you know what we did we can explain how it actually went so let's get into the five pros and the five cons of what it's like to start boat life so the first major con of boat life is that it's expensive and we kind of knew this when we sold our van that everything related to the boat would be more expensive the things like the stern art or the hydro vane these are just like huge pieces of metal and they're built not to corrode in a marine environment so it makes sense that they're expensive i think What's been surprising is that when you're doing like little projects on the boat and you need to go to the hardware store and you buy like some screws or some bolts and like a little bit of sealant, just putting the words marine grade in front of something like automatically doubles the price. And I think in our case, we're outfitting this boat because we want to sail around the world. So we have a lot of expenses that aren't really necessary if all you want to do is like get out there and sail. I think sailing itself is actually a much more affordable hobby than I ever thought, just because there's so many like old, beautiful boats you can buy that aren't in pristine condition and they're definitely not suited for like offshore sailing, but they can get you sailing for way, way less than what we're doing now. So con number two is getting groceries on this boat takes so much time and so much effort. So for the summer, we luckily still had a car, thank you to my parents, who let us use it, but we had to park it about a mile and a half away. So if I was like, wow, we're low on groceries, I would have to be like, okay, take the dinghy to shore, then walk the mile and a half, get the car, go to the grocery store, get all the groceries, then drive them back to the dinghy dock, load all the groceries there, then take them to the boat, Lou would help me unload them, then go back to the dinghy, get the car, park the car, and then walk back. So it was kind of like, I don't know, a three hour adventure to go stock the boat. We had so many projects going on and then also learning how to sail, it felt like just to find the time to get the groceries was kind of, it was overwhelming sometimes. And then we didn't have a fridge, so I feel like I couldn't really stock up like crazy because we do have an ice box, but it was kind of hard to manage the ice box situation. And it was, yeah, the ice box was a whole thing. It was nice to have it for sure, but overall we lost like a lot of produce. So I feel like the groceries situation was definitely a con for me this summer. So con number three is that upkeep on the boat is constant. And personally, this isn't that much of a con for me because I like taking care of stuff and cleaning stuff. And it's nice to have like really simple tasks to do after editing, like cleaning the dinghy. We didn't clean our dinghy for the entire summer and then we flipped it over and there was just an entire little ecosystem on the bottom of that thing. And it took a couple of hours to clean and it was definitely exhausting, but it was also like a really fun, rewarding experience. But I can see how things could really get out of control if you didn't keep up with like maintaining the boat. So that's definitely something we're gonna pay attention to in the future and definitely one of the major cons. So con number four is that water gets everywhere on this boat. And that I don't think is something I was prepared for for starting boat life, especially once we moved to the aft cabin. I feel like when you'd wake up and you'd come outside to go back into the main area, crawling over wet cushions and things like that, I feel like it was just a strange feeling. Like if you left anything out that wasn't, you know, marine grade, it would rust. Um, things, if you didn't remember to like take your laundry down, it would get so damp. And yes, when you're living in the van, that was definitely true because we were still outside. But I think actually living on the water, you don't realize like the air itself is moist. Like everything is like collecting dew. And so that was one thing I was not totally prepared for. And I feel like during the hot months in the summer, it didn't bother me at all. But then once it started getting colder, like in October, it was just like this damp coldness was getting onto the boat. And that was something that made me kind of happy to get Penelope out of the water and into a cozy cottage instead. So con number five is that the beds are really small. This summer, we've tried sleeping in all three different beds on our boat, in the front, in the back, in the middle and each room has its own unique set of pros and cons. 
The V-berth at the front kind of smells like the holding tank, so that's like a whole issue. The beds on the boat definitely feel fine if you're just sleeping like a couple nights for like a weekend trip or something. But I think for long-term cruising, we're definitely gonna have to make some changes to make them more comfortable going forward. So enough with all that negativity. Let's get into the good stuff, the pros about starting boat life, because honestly, there are so many more pros than there are cons, and I feel super attached to this lifestyle, even though we've only been doing it for a year. And so the first pro I'm gonna say is that it's been a huge growth opportunity for us in so many different levels. I feel like just learning everything about boats, you know, the terminology, how to actually sail, getting on and off a of mooring, docking, there are so many moments of like, you have to like, at least for me, I like pet myself up like, okay, Dana, like you can do this, like you can dock the boat. And then when you actually get the feeling of like doing it, like the look on our like face when I can like look to Lou after he's gotten our mooring and picks it up, it's just such a sense of accomplishment that we get to share together. And I feel like, so learning has been a huge growth opportunity, but then also I feel like honestly, like as a couple, it's been a huge growth opportunity for us. Sailing is like a collaborative sport. You need to learn how to communicate well. You need to learn how to work together well. And it all, like it doesn't have to be going fast, but sometimes things do happen quickly. And so I think for us, we've, while we do, we work together, you know, we make these videos. We've been working together for like five years. I think we've been married for almost four years. Sailing is like the real deal. Like I can see why like couples either love this or don't. And I feel like, yeah, we definitely, like everybody, have ups and downs, especially of all things like this year. But when I look back on the year, I feel like it was like the exact tool that we needed to like really push ourselves further and grow. And I, I'm just so excited about like how it's gonna develop going forward because we really built a solid foundation for ourselves this year and that's because of sailing. And so I feel like that's the biggest pro of, of boat life is that you learn how to live on a boat, which is like probably one of the coolest things out there. Your home is now the ocean. Like, I don't know, that is, that is amazing. <laughs> so yeah, that would be my first pro. Sailing is a huge growth opportunity. So the second pro about starting boat life that I wasn't expecting is that it's an extremely active and physical lifestyle. When you're setting up the sails, when you're taking down the sails, when you're rowing to shore, when you're building stuff, when you're swimming, you're just kind of like always moving. And this can also be a bit of a challenge when you're like feeling stiff and then you have to like climb into a locker to like fix some wiring or something like that. Like it's definitely not a forgiving lifestyle but it keeps you on your toes and it's fun when you go sailing. I feel like you get like a little bit of a mini workout, especially if you're anchoring, like lifting the anchor with our windlass is quite a bit of work. And I just really enjoy that because at the end of the day, your body is really tired and your mind is really tired. And I feel like you just sleep so well on the water when you've had like all of that physical exertion. So that's definitely one of my favorite pros about starting boat life. So the third pro about boat life, especially on this boat, is that the kitchen here is just my dream kitchen. Honestly, it has worked out so well for us. I feel like there's so much storage, not only for like canned foods and things like that, but there's storage everywhere. There's storage under all of the cushions. We have this whole spread. You see this behind me here? This whole spread, we have our retro beautiful oven and that has actually turned out really well. I think we've made muffins on this boat like 30 times, they're very delicious. I think the recipe is on our Patreons for people who are asking for the muffin recipe, it is in our Patreon as a post. But yeah, this kitchen honestly made me so happy all summer and that's something that, not to make this totally a comparison to van life, but in the van, while I loved our kitchen, it was so, so small. It did have a fridge, so that was a huge bonus, but there was no place to put anything. It was like, this has countertops. You can sit and hang out and chop. Like we have this table, we have a table outside. So it just, I feel like we could really feel settled and live. And because we love cooking so much, we spend so much time cooking. And to have a nice place to do that, especially that we can do that together where both people can get involved because there's enough, enough counter space for that was such an upgrade in our life and you know you spend your time cooking in here and you make this beautiful dinner and then you can go eat it in the cockpit and like have a sunset dinner any night you want it's just like i kept having to pinch myself like this is real like we can just do this at any time and this is just our home you know it's really really spectacular 
So the fourth pro about boat life is that the boat allows you to stay in beautiful remote places. We didn't get to fully take advantage of that this summer, but I'll never forget for my 30th birthday, sailing into Cuddy Hunk and arriving at this absolutely gorgeous island. And even though it's only like eight nautical miles from shore, you just get this feeling when you're out there that you're in like a totally different natural environment and you feel like more connected to the ocean. And when you're anchoring in like a bay and there's no other boats there, there's just like something really, really beautiful and calm and also adventurous about those experiences. And I'm so excited to really see where they take us. So the last pro of starting Boat Life has been the fact that Sailing is truly incredible, and Lou and I have completely fallen in love with this like way of life. I think that it is hard to picture what sailing feels like, but then it's like better than what you could even imagine because when you go out, you don't even like need to focus on a destination. Like so much of our summer, because we were really just trying to get like some practice under our belt and learn how to sail, we wouldn't have destinations. We would just go out for four hours or something like that and just sail and having the wind in your face and like smelling the sea breeze and like hearing the waves laughing up on the side of Penelope. It was just like, that was it. You didn't even need a destination. And I think that was one of the huge turning points in realizing that the actual like act of sailing you know the whole the journey not the destination thing like this is like that embodied and it made me just have such an appreciation for this sport for people who are involved in it like living your life on the water is just magical and it gets you connected to nature i feel like even like little things like looking up the tide so you know when the tide is going like oh my gosh it's a full mood the tide's gonna be stronger like this is where the wind's coming. Like it's just been such a magical experience getting to become closer to the ocean and something that I feel like is gonna grow and develop even more as we, you know, get more used to it. So that would be the final pro is just that sailing is incredible and I feel so lucky to call this boat my home. Even if she is on the hard now, you know, we are wrapping up with this video, our first season on the water and it didn't end with a trip to the Caribbean. It ends with us, you know, putting the boat back in the boat yard and gearing up for another winter of boat work. But, you know, that's actually part of the beauty for me is because starting boat life is everything. Like boat life isn't just, you know, palm trees and things like that. It's also working on your boat because like Lou had said in the condos, like things can fall apart much quicker than you realize. And so taking our time now to get the boat ready just feels like so good and really grounding and i'm so happy that penelope is gonna like be everything that we need so i guess that wraps up our first season of boat life thank you so much to everybody who like supported us like not only buying the ebook joining our patreon all that good stuff like subscribing to this channel helps so much liking it leaving liking the videos leaving comments on them we just feel so supported by this community and yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed this learning process too and are excited for it to continue because learning new things is something that like brings Lou and I so much joy and like getting out of our comfort zone and realizing like we can do these things too. We just have to put our mind to it. So I hope that's like kind of the essence of what you got out of this first season.